Welcome back to another video. My name's Carl Gosling and today I'm going to run you through how to use the Sim Racing Studio software to operate the LED Go kit that I reviewed last week. So let me just get some screen capture on the go here. Oh, on F9, yeah, there we go. So um, there's not really a massive amount to this really. It's very simple, like a lot of the Sim Racing Studio products, the software is really easy to use. So you load up the Sim Racing Studio app, there's no drivers to install, and if you've already got this uh, app, then you just, you just need to, to load it up. And then across the top there, click LED strip, which is the one next to IntelliBox, and you'll be presented with this screen. Now, the very first slide, a number of LEDs, is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you've got the 150 LED kit, choose 150, and you know adjust it according to, to what you've got. Nice and simple. Uh, over to the right of that is your mode. Automatic means it will automatically detect what game is running and load up the profile that you've got saved for that. Then you've got always on, which will literally turn the LEDs on permanently. And that's useful to test everything's working, that all the LED strips, all the different segments are all working as you'd like them to. And if you just look up to the right of that, there's a picture of a keyboard. You can set a keyboard shortcut to flick between these settings. Obviously off is off. So we'll leave it on auto. I'm not actually gonna load a game up because there's no need for, for me to do that to be able to show you this. Um, number of segments is one to four. How many segments you want your LED strip to be broken up into. So we've got rectangular monitors. You want one at the bottom, two at the sides, one at the top, so four segments. Uh, and then you can choose the size of each segment. If we look down here at segment one, I've got LED one to 43. Now for my setup on my television, uh, which is 65 inches, and I started applying the LED from the bottom left hand corner, one to 43 gives me the full strip along the very bottom there. Uh, and that's what I use. If you look over to the right, that's what I use as the rev counter. And if you've watched my review and installation video from last week, you'll see uh, how that works. Now, if you drag that slider, where I've got the mouse hovering now near the 43, if you drag that more to the right, it will start to go up the side of the TV using those LEDs. So obviously with a four segment setup, that isn't what you want. You want it to stay one at the bottom, one each side and one at the top. So I've got that set to RPM. Your drop down menu here lets you choose from all the available options and you'd have seen those again in the previous video as well, but there they are once more. So we'll leave that at RPM because that's how I wanted it. Um, the next one down, segment two, it looks like I've skipped an LED here. I've gone from 43 to 45. Now, I think I had, the way I had it, let's have a look. The way I had it bent round on the corner, there was perhaps one that was covered up, but I didn't notice I'd missed one, but I'm guessing I had. But anyways, you go from 44 to 69 or 45 to 69 will be fine. And that was the height of, again, for my television, that takes it from bottom to top. Um, on the right hand side there and then if you look over here I've chosen spot or right and flag so what that means is like in iRacing again if you watch the previous video as a car comes on the right hand side and your spotter says car on the right the right hand side will light up and also if you get black flagged or whatever other color flags might occur the sides and the if you look immediately below the top one's flag only uh, and then look at the third one here, the very last segment, sorry, the fourth segment, that's also flag plus left spotter. So when you get flagged or a flag comes up, they will all display, um, you know, the, the flag status. So, uh, and when they're not doing that, the, the right hand one does your right spotter, left hand one does your left spotter. And the top one, which is the next segment down, segment three, which for me is 70 to 112 on the LEDs. That gives me the top. Obviously that doesn't do much for most of the race. Um, because you don't usually have flags all that often. Um, but certainly your, your spotters uh, are active pretty, pretty often, and the rev counter, of course, at the bottom is active all the time. Uh, and that really is all there is to this software. You know, you, you choose your number of LEDs, you put it on auto, you can get keyboard shortcut if you want to, choose your number of segments. Oh, there's a brightness slider, I didn't mention that. Actually, that's interesting, the brightness slider, if you adjust that, you then need to cycle the LEDs off and then back on again um, for the brightness to actually adjust. When I was first sliding this up and down, I kind of expected them to do it dynamically as I was sliding it, but it didn't. I had to actually cycle them off and then back on for the brightness to update. 
Um, but yeah, so there's your brightness, your number of segments. Set them to what you want, but that is how I recommend it. If you want to do them differently, you can. You literally just move the sliders um, you know, to adjust how big these segments are. And you can actually move the left-hand side of the slider as well if you wanted to say, if, if for example, you wanted segment one to start in the middle at the bottom, you could, instead of starting at LED one, you could start at LED, what would half of that be, 20, 21, something like that. Um, so it's all fully adjustable. You can have a little play around, and then there's just your drop downs on the right hand side, um, just to assign whatever it is you want those particular segments to display. But that really is all there is to it. Um, yeah, put it always on, and then, set up your, so I'd recommend that, put it always on and then set your segment sizes because then they'll all be lit up and you can watch them adjust live. Put it always on, set your segment sizes, choose what you want them to be. Um, you could actually go to, to the games tab and let's say I wanted to and go from auto to manual, let's say I want to do iRacing for example. Scroll down to iRacing, click on it and now it says at the bottom here game iRacing. If we go back to the LED strip tab, you can actually adjust these now and then save the profile should you want to do it without the game running. Maybe there's a tweak you wanted to make to your settings. But um, for the most part, you're just going to leave it on auto anyway. Uh, and again, you'll come back to your game detection and put that back to auto as well. But that really is all, the, all there is to it. Choose your number of LEDs, leave it on auto, set the bright. I, I say leave the brightness on 100%. And that's, it's not too bright. It's just about right. Segment four. Choose your sizes, set them up accordingly. You can even see from the, the width for the bars here, segments one and three are obviously wider than segments two and four because they're the top and bottom and the others are the left and right. Drop down menus to choose what you want, save the profile, and that's really it. So yeah, um, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't bought any of Sim Racing Studios products, you can use my discount code, which is KG5, gets you 5% off any anything you order from them. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take it easy.